Hello, everyone, and welcome to my presentation about defaults, cloning, referencing, and content prototypes, and the editor's user experience for similar content creation. Uh, I'll say a few words about myself first. So my name is Simo Helsten. Uh, I'm a full stack developer at Druid in Finland. Uh, I studied computer science in Helsinki and Tampere universities. And uh, my first Drupal site went live on in 2007. Uh, that was Drupal 5 at the moment, uh, at that time. Uh, I'm a member of the Drupal UX team and I follow Drupal accessibility issues and uh, uh, I also participate in W3C Cognitive Accessibility Community Group and uh, the Nordic Accessibility Group. And uh, I'm a member of International Association for Accessibility Professionals. Uh, in my free time, I train with Japanese weapons and play with fire. Uh, at home, I have waiting for me four dogs, four cats, a spouse and a daughter. And you can see one dog and one cat in the picture. <laughs> Depends if it's feeding time. <laughs> Maybe the cats are at the end, huh? But about creating similar content, if there's something that computers are great at, it's automating things. But still, we do a lot of things manually when we use those computers. Uh, many of us are still used to copy pasting information from docs to a web page. And often we sometimes have some kind of a, a text where we copy paste things to several different pages. <laughs> and uh, sometimes we need to create a lot of content that is almost the same, but not exactly, like maybe some customized certificates, time-bound time products, or target, targeted newsletters, or things that have parts that are the same and parts that are different. And uh, in this kind of things, automation can help. But there are different kinds of ways to automate things or make things sem semi-automatic. So some of the cases where we use this kind of a content replication is when we have a partially same content that we use for grouping pieces of like, like other stories. Like it's very common to use taxonomy terms to group uh, different like blog posts or articles. And uh, sometimes we include short biographies or contact details or some other additional information uh, about the author. So that's kind of a using the same content over and over. And uh, that's where we face a challenge when information changes over time. So when the author gets some new role or new information that kind of uh, relates to the new content, but not to the old, uh, what should we do? So there is a real life example from a few years back when a program assistant in Zambia wrote uh, news stories to the organization's website. And ni nine years later, the same person was hired as an assessment specialist in the Helsinki office of that organization. And uh, her new role and the content she published was very much different from what she had done before. And we ended up with a dilemma. Should we use uh, the same uh, public profile for the author or different? And uh, how would it would affect the nine-year-old stories that were kind of the topic was quite different. And in a, in a way, choosing between uh, that kind of fixed content or references or maybe referencing specific versions of, of content, that's a kind of mostly it's editorial dilemma, but there are tools that can be used to manage that in the content management system and some, there, there are some differences. So here's a kind of a graphical example of the same situation. So we have the author Spot, who is a six month old dog hound terrier puppy. And uh, he has written uh, two blog posts about experiences from the puppy class. And uh, the profile is referenced there. And uh, five years later, Spot, the dog hound terrier, is a specialist search dog and writes about the work of like the days of the working dog. 
So there's, there is a kind of a, it would be difficult to understand public class experiences <laughs> if, this, if it would be written by a like professional working dog or working dog's life if, if it would be written by a small dog puppy. Uh, another case where we use similar content is uh, when, when we have products that have variations. So Drupal Commerce has a certain support for variations, but this is not the same thing I'm talking about here. So if you're like, uh, have a commerce product that is a dog, dog training class, and uh, like people are searching for certain kinds of classes for dogs, and then the uh, name, like they have the same name, but there are some differences in the content. So if, uh, if a class, uh, dog, dog training class is called puppy class, it's always a course for puppies. It's about basic skills, but there will be some uh, kind of uh, differences there. So sometimes there are changes in the content, in the descriptions that need to be updated. Uh, and because some research suggests that some methods would be better for dogs than others. And then we already have sold uh, this kind of a uh, classes with the old description, old content, so we don't want to change the information in the old product because if the clients want to reference what was promised and if they got what was promised. And uh, there can be some kind of a variations in dog training classes like breed specific class or sometimes uh, it can be a bit longer or a bit shorter uh, uh, class and then how to update the classes that are coming uh, in the future and uh, how to manage that kind of a uh, content creation process so that it will be easy to create similar content but also to keep the uh, old information in the old products. And yeah, so is it possible to update some of the content with the shared information but keep content the same in some of the some other that have used the same content. So, yeah, graphical example. So there are different kind of variations for puppy class. So some some classes might be outdoors, some indoors, some might be for certain sh certain uh, breeds, and some might have long, shorter, or longer duration. So there is variation, but most of the content is the same. And then uh, we sometimes want to combine fixed text uh, in content uh, with uh, some kind of var vari variable content. So we might have some kind of a newsletter template where we have fixed fixed content and then we pull in some uh, kind of a view or some kind of different, different kind of information. And like we want to store it in a way that is archivable so that the kind of a same parts don't change. And uh, there are different kinds of ways to use con reuse content, or cr uh, and some of the uh, modules I've looked at, they use kind of a mixed terminology, and I kind of here I a little bit uh, take distance from Drupal terms, uh, so that it will be more a bit more generic. So I call pages uh, this kind of a nodes, terms, products, this kind of a fieldable entities that have their own URL, so I kind of call, call the basic content, I, I call page. And uh, I call fields, this kind of atomic parts that are page content, so that's kind of more or less the same as Drupal field. And uh, I call sections uh, when you kind of have a combination of fields that might be pulled from another page, or uh, like if you have a term, field, term, taxonomy term with fields and you pull it into a page, then I call, would call that section. And uh, I call source the original page or that's either duplicated or referenced or, yeah, so where the uh, information uh, is stored where that is going to be reused. So the most, <coughs> most basic case of reusing content is using field default values. So field UI, that's in the core. So it's kind of always available in Drupal. And it can be sometimes very useful for simple things. 
but it can be hard to update, especially if you have uh, users who are who don't have uh, like permissions to uh, manage fields or content types. So it's kind of a, it, managing the field default values. It's something that requires quite a high uh, user perm uh, permission. And uh, when you use field default values, the new if you want to uh, change change those uh, defaults, it only affects uh, the newly created content, so you can't update uh, everything you have already done. Except if there is a module called v field defaults that's in alpha stage that can update uh, update uh, those change defaults to different content that uses or that uh, content that uses those <coughs> field values, but it's a very uh, rough method because it, it doesn't have very, very fine grade uh, options to update, so it kind of updates everything. Uh, but it's possible. And uh, another very common thing what we use is referencing other content. So this is just when we have uh, <coughs> taxonomy terms, we reference, we reference images, we reference other pages, so we can pull information from other entities. Uh, so uh, we have pages that use other other uh, pages as sections inside those the kind of content that is shown to users, uh, like the viewers. And here uh, it's very uh, efficient in a way to in in the way that it keeps the information current when you e edit uh, the section or the original source then. Uh, or the information where it was referenced is updated as well. But this is uh, in a kind of, if you have a lot of content and a lot of references and a lot of uh, editors, then you need to, they need to be able to keep track where the content is used. And if somebody updates content that is referenced in one place and doesn't realize that the same content is referenced by another uh, page, then it's kind of, you can, it can get a bit funny sometimes. And uh, referencing other content, we have some special cases uh, such as layout builder blocks that can be referenced and can be reused. And we have a paragraph that are usually uh, not reusable, so we can't uh, easily reference other paragraphs. But uh, there is actually some modules I introduced here that can also do things with reusing paragraphs. And uh, when then uh, something that is more versatile uh, thing to do in Drupal is, oh, I changed the order. So cloning fields from con content pro uh, prototypes. So this is something that doesn't actually yet have a module, but it's more of a concept. Uh, so this is something uh, I'm working on a website that has uh, uh, this approach where uh, I use field values from different uh, content so that uh, it copies copies the field values uh, to the uh, content form and then uh, so I it can this uh, is very kind of a combination of referencing and uh, field defaults but it's instead of using field defaults that are set in field UI it uses uh, values from different pieces of content and this is a way how we can um, separate the permissions for updating values, uh, default values, and we can use a selection of different de default values. And we can also uh, we can also combine different sources for different fields. And uh, this is done by re referencing uh, the original source, and then it copies the values to the edit form, and then after the new 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 content is stored, uh, then it kind of cuts the connection. So ed editing the originals doesn't change the piece of content, but it keeps the reference, so it can be uh, uh, um, it can so it's possible to implement a feature that updates select fields. Uh, but then. Uh, the most uh, versatile method of using same content 
is cloning, cloning entities. Uh, so cloning entities and editing is one approach uh, to do this. And here we have several different modules that do uh, more or less the same things, but with diff very different flavor. Uh, so one of the methods of cloning is to copy everything from the original source and then save it and then edit that page later. Uh, there is, uh, in this method, uh, there is a risk because if, uh, to have duplicate values, because if it copies everything, uh, it, there might be some different kinds of IDs that come from uh, outside group or some strings that should be unique but and need to be added manually or from other, another source. So like, like for instance in some uh, uh, medical data, data uh, med, uh, like uh, pharmacological databases there are different kinds of IDs that are used by officials and it's kind of not easy to handle those through APIs. Uh, so in that kind of things, it, there is a risk that the editor forgets to edit a value that was cloned. So because it looks like it's there, it passes validation maybe, but yeah, then you would have two same values. And uh, here when you use uh, cloning, uh, you can have many, many sources of information. So when you have the original that you, you use to make uh, copies of and start edi editing them. Uh, when you, then you start have, having different branches and if you want to combine information that's in them, it can be sometimes difficult to decide which one to start working on. But it can be also a strength to have this kind of multiple uh, sources available. But that's one of the very dangerous parts, I think, with cloning and especially with cloning entities as such, is that some of the, some of the modules that are available, they uh, clone the entity and save it as published version. So that's something that happens with uh, several modules that can do cloning. So there it's, uh, uh, but I'll come back to that later. Uh, another way of cloning uh, entities is to uh, copy, like to copy all the values into the same uh, type of content or same same type of page, so that uh, you you get end up in the create create form, creating a new uh, create form with the uh, field values copied from the uh, original source, and this 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 is not so dangerous because then it doesn't. Uh, uh, automatically create published content, and uh, but still it has the risk of duplicate values. And uh, here also the editing of the original source doesn't affect the later versions. And this one also has the question of which version to start working from. So here are some of the modules that do cloning. So there is entity clone that is a beta version, there is content entity clone, entity copy with reference, and replicate that has uh, at least three different user interfaces. So replicate, replicate UI, entity bulk clone, and page templates. The, 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 those three are uh, such that they use replicate. And then there is cloner that is in alpha stage, and uh, both replicate and cloner, are, are, they don't have user interface. Those are something that uh, developer can use to build their own, <coughs> own, own ways of doing the cloning. And here is explained a little bit about the different differences with cloning and, cloning and the status of the content, because we usually like to keep the unfinished work, work out of sight. Uh, so, here we have that uh, original page that has been published and uh, then the quickest way to uh, clone content is to just clone it and there will be a published clone. So this is the default method for replicate. Uh, and also because there was uh, that uh, bulk version 
uh, uh, user interface that bulk clones uh, nodes with replicate, uh, it's possible to uh, rep like publish a lot of clones at the same time. So that's something that you need, the user needs to keep in mind uh, that you should maybe clone things that are not published. Uh, then it's pos some modules do so that they, uh, you, you take a published page and then you clone it and it is still published, but it opens as edit form. So then the user doesn't know that it's already published because you have it open in edit form. And then you can save it either after, after it has been published and after you edit, you, then you user can choose if it goes unpublished or published. But that's something that's kind of uh, confusing for the user that uh, you can open a, open a page in edit form and then you don't know that it's already saved as published. Uh, then uh, there is also one option that this is actually the uh, page template uh, module that where that does refuses to accept uh, sources that are published. So you have to first save the original as unpublished, then you can convert it as a template and then you can use the template to clone. So that's something that's safe, but it can be a bit not, not so eff effective sometimes, but that's at least it doesn't publish anything without asking. So th th this is something that's uh, very important to remember. And uh, then I have a rough comparison of different ways of do, uh, replicating content. So uh, when the source changes, uh, how these different approaches behave. So when you're using field values by default, uh, when you change the default values, none of the content that use those uh, default values changes. So they just keep the, info, the, the values that were stored in the, in the, on the pages. And uh, when you clone entities or cl clone pages, then uh, when you edit the source, also the clone doesn't change anymore. Uh, when you reference uh, other, uh, other entities, then uh, when you edit the source, also the, those pages that use the, uh, so like use a reference to the source, they change. So that's kind of the referencing is the only one that keeps content up to date. And uh, with content prototype, uh, it behaves just like field default values, but as the uh, kind of the, re there is a reference to the original piece of content. So it's possible to implement a method that updates. And uh, this is kind of the same thing that diverging from the source, uh, so that uh, when you have uh, default values, uh, when uh, there is only one source of truth, when you create new content, it only uh, uses the ones, the values that are currently stored in the, uh, as the default. So it's kind of diverge, diverging from the original. Uh, it happens when the original is changed. Uh, with cloned entities, you can end up with different kinds of versions because each each new version can be used as a source or usually each version can be used as a new source so you can have different kind of uh, uh, like uh, different kind of branches there and uh, with referencing entities uh, then when you change the original everything changes at the same time so in that in that sense, there is no diver diversion uh, uh, caused by editing the source. And with the content prototypes, basically it behaves the same way as field default values. And with permissions, uh, yeah, di different ways of uh, reusing content require different kind of permissions. And uh, if we want to use field default values, which is the most simple one, uh, the permission is, you. Uh, the user requires for updating the defaults is managing field managing fields uh, and that's a very strong uh, 
permissions. So that's something that kind of uh, is not very useful for maybe big organizations at least. And then, uh, then again, with field defaults, you don't need for creating a new page, you don't need any extra permissions except to create that kind of content type. Uh, with co cloning entities, uh, the original sources are created in the same way as just any content you create afterwards. And then you need, for creating new pages you, uh, by cloning, you need permission to do that cloning. Uh, you need to, you need a, actually you need also a permission to view content that was created. That's usually uh, given that you, users can view the content they edit, but it's not actually compulsory. Uh, but uh, for cloning, you need to be able to uh, see what you're cloning and then start cloning it. And that's a little bit different permissions for different modules. And then you create the content. Uh, when you reference entities, you need to be, to create the sources, you need to be able to create and edit those kind of content types or con th that kind of type of content you need to be referenced. And when you create new content, you need to uh, be able to view those so that you can, like on the form, you can reference them. And uh, the same goes with the, that content prototypes because content prototypes uses references for uh, targeting that, uh, for choosing that uh, content from which to copy field default values. So when things can go wrong, uh, cloning references is something that uh, it can sometimes be a bit complicated because when you clone content, several of the modules also clone the references. And uh, the user needs to know uh, what are the different kinds of dependencies uh, that if, if there is referen like a reference content in the new clone, the same, same references exist in the original. So you can't go changing them. Except some of the modules are, uh, do so, they give option to uh, duplicate the referenced items so that you, you, and that's something that also kind of can cause problems if the uh, editor clones a piece of content that has some uh, taxonomy terms, tags, and checks box that says uh, uh, make a copy of these terms, and then you end up having duplicate tags in your taxonomy. That's also possible. Uh, and the big thing, yeah, I mentioned already before and mentioned it again, uh, saving clone <coughs> before reviewing it and saving a published version of the like content before giving user access, uh, possibility to review it. So that's something that is kind of scary. Uh, and yeah, and then it's possible with cloning, it's possible to reuse something, some kind of a ID string or something that is might pass validation, but if, it, if it's not validated so that it needs to be unique. So it's <coughs> usually better for this kind of uh, string, so this kind of values to be able to skip those. And it's better to have them empty <coughs> than to have duplicate values in some cases. Uh, and uh, yeah, the other side did it like there are different kinds of ways of cloning inside Drupal, several different modules. So it can be also user interface is different and what they do is different. So it's very important for users to know how this site does it. And it's something that you don't, if you've done cloning on one Drupal site, it might work quite differently on other if you don't know which module has been used. And uh, Yeah, and having limited access to content can cause problems so that the user doesn't know when, it, when there is references to the different con pieces of content, then uh, if the user doesn't know where that content has been used and decides to start editing that kind of that section that has been referenced, so it can cause problems. And uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, and I, I didn't find anything that could do clone a node or c 
clone a piece of content so that it would clone some of the reference entities, but only reference some. So that's kind of a fine-grained version. I, I wasn't able to find, I'm not sure, there might be something somewhere, but I didn't find it. And uh, yeah, and when you when your uh, clone translated content, uh, then you also have, a, have to choose between two options. One is that you clone the whole thing so that you store the entity, that you have a, let's say, English version and Finnish version, and then you clone it, and then you have English clone and Finnish clone. And that's something I don't like because I'd like to see that the content comes to the edit, uh, like the edit form first, so I can review it. But of course, you can't have uh, two languages on one edit form, so you have to choose either either having the possibility to review or the possibility to have uh, both languages cloned at once. So that's kind of a trade-off. So as a summary. Creating similar content can be done by copying entities into new entities, field values to the add form entity, uh, add form field uh, content, or copying one source uh, to one content or many sources to one content, and uh, copying only references or duplicating the reference entities as well. So there's a lot of variation, and uh, yeah, and the best approach how to do it depends on the need to if uh, you need to update multiple content at once. So that's with translations or maybe something else, and then uh, uh, maintaining single source of truth. There is variation if if uh, you want if you have single source of truth or if you can uh, have different sources from which to clone, and then uh, being fast and never mind the risk. So this one relates to just cloning and publishing right away, so, and bulk publishing clones. So this, this is something, you, sometimes it can be useful. If you have a like development site, you'd, that's not public, so you can start building building it quite fast. So, and uh, then, uh, yeah, and if you need to divide permissions on editing the source and creating new instances, because usually, uh, well, I didn't mention it, I think, before, if you uh, use cloning, you usually clone the same type of content, and then you end up, uh, you, you need to give permissions to do that. But with something like uh, content prototypes, you can uh, give permission to view uh, the originals, but not to edit them. So it's kind of you can uh, different methods can use uh, allow to uh, you to uh, kind of make different permissions. And also, page templates module allows you to uh, like restrict it viewing unpublished content. Uh, but. And the, so I have here some of the different ways of cloning. So replicate, U, replicate UI, uh, this is you uh, use this uh, replicate module. And uh, with this one, the problem is that uh, the replicated content is published right away if the original was published. And uh, is this it's possible to do some uh, configurations on how the, uh, which entities are clonable. Uh, with content entity clone, it's possible to skip fields, so you can choose which fields to clone, so this is something I like myself, so you can choose which uh, skipping field, so it leaves some things blank. Uh, and uh, this one doesn't, uh, I think this one was also so that it doesn't create and publish the content, but fills fills the information into an uh, ad form. So this is kind of a kind of safe. Uh, and also, yeah, the local top. So they usually have uh, those uh, uh, as tabs on the 
either, either view page, uh, either viewing the content or editing the content. They have those tabs uh, uh, where you can choose cloning. And this is also something that it's a little bit different because some some uh, modules only have them have the uh, link to cloning on the view version of the page and some only on the edit version of the page. So there, there's also that if some user is uh, used to one way, it might be hard to find where to, where to click the clone button. Uh, entity clone, this kind of, I get, got, got the feeling that this, is, this one would be quite powerful. You have all those different options to check different configuration, configuration but I didn't quite figure out what all those configurations mean. But this is uh, the module that can, uh, you, where you can choose if you uh, duplicate also the referenced entities. So you can duplicate taxonomy terms that may be not so useful, but you can also duplicate uh, paragraphs. So this is the one that can duplicate paragraphs. But it also gives you option to use paragraphs without duplicating them. And it has a long warning text that uh, if you have a paragraph field in your entity and you choose not to clone it here, deleting the original, uh, yeah, will delete the uh, paragraph in the clone. So that, that's something that I think is quite dangerous, but at least there is a warning text, but nobody probably, probably reads that. But this, this is a very powerful, powerful, powerful one, but it has, to me, it feels like it's the user interface is a bit difficult to understand. And then there is quick node clone, which is like very simple approach. It just uh, clones the values into uh, add node form. And yeah, that's very simple. Very feels very safe, only that it clones everything. So you can't skip fields from cloning, but this is very simple one. And uh, then uh, we have entity copy with reference. Uh, and uh, yeah, so this can either reference or clone the reference entities. I think so this is something that, but this is uh, kind of, it's not uh, per cloning as with the other module, but here you can kind of per, I think it's per content type. You can choose whether to clone or clear or keep the references, but also here you can't choose to keep some and clone some. And then uh, page templates is also using replicate, but it's uh, it has a kind of a, uh, I think it's quite intuitive interface so that it forces you to unpublish the original first, and then you can convert the original into template, and the editor can from the like uh, creating new content can choose to create from tempa template and then it's kind of a, the process is kind of a, uh, it's not straightforward cloning and it's a bit more safe than other, o o other cloning methods using uh, replicate module. And entity bulk clone is, so you can clone a lot of different, like uh, from the con content, uh, list you can uh, clone a lot of a lot of uh, nodes at the same time. It uses replicate, and therefore it keeps the published state. So if you uh, clone bulk clone ten published pages, you get ten new pages that are published already. So th these are these are where the cloning methods. <coughs> 